Hi everyone, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I make golf and travel videos on this channel. Today I am in China's mandatory 14 day hotel quarantine. The point of this video is I'm going to show you guys what it's like to live in a relatively small hotel room for 14 days with no interaction to the outside world. I'm going to be showing you guys the food that I get, how I try to stay active, stay sane, just my day to day life, and maybe Maybe give you guys some insights on what it's like to do the hotel quarantine here and how I am coping with it personally. I know that my story is different than a lot of other people. Everyone is here in China for a different reason, but we do all have to do this quarantine. If you go to a different city, the quarantine length might be different. I think in Beijing it might be a little bit longer. I am in Shanghai right now and it is a 14 day quarantine as long as everyone on my flight tests negative negative throughout quarantine. Everyone tests negative before the flight, so I'm not really worried about that. Right now, it is about 7.30 a.m. At about 8 o'clock, they serve breakfast and it just gets delivered to my door. I will show you guys my breakfast once it is served. Okay, so I just got my breakfast. It is in this bag. So every single day, they deliver our meals in these bags. There is three times, so breakfast is at 8 a.m., lunch is at noon, and dinner is at 6 p.m. And they just put it on the little table that's outside of our door. And when I'm done, I put the garbage at the bottom of the table and then they'll clear it for us. So as you saw, everyone is wearing the hazmat suits. It is very sanitary. They do actually sanitize both this bag and our garbage bags before they take it out. They take this very seriously, which I think is good. Also, every day there is two temperature checks. So in the morning, there is one and then there's one in the afternoon. And then every three days, there is another PCR test. Let me show you guys what I have for breakfast today. Alright, so breakfast, they always come in a container like this. And then this, I believe, is just kanji. Yeah, so this is just kanji. They gave us this like SpongeBob cutlery thing that just contains a spoon and chopsticks. I saw in someone else's YouTube video, obviously, as you know now, quarantine hotels vary in how nice they are, where they are. There's another hotel where they give you like your own cutlery kit and then you're just supposed to wash it after every meal. I think that's a lot more environmentally friendly than giving us these every single meal. For us, we get these reusable ones or not reusable ones, I guess. So chopsticks and then because it's China, it always comes with a toothpick. I don't know why Chinese people like to pick their teeth. I just have like the flossing thing that I do, but I don't just sit around and use a toothpick. That's something that people do here. Let's see what's in my box. All right. So we got this is sweet potato. This is just a hard boiled egg. This looks like your classic, just basic Chinese bun. This is a Bao. I think there's something inside. We will see in a second. I'll open it for you guys. This one is another bun. I think this also probably has a filling, but we will find out in a second. And this is just some pickled vegetables. And usually these are really good to eat with the buns or in the kanji. And if you can see this kanji, it's kind of just rice water. It's not the best kanji that I've seen, but it's some sustenance. I'm very excited to see what's inside of these buns though, so let's open those up. Okay, let's open up this one. Let's focus. So, ooh. All right. So it looks like it's just a pork bun. Let's try it. Yeah, just your classic pork bun. Now let's open up this one. Ooh, so this has um, a paste inside. This kind of reminds me like of a black bean paste, but like a sweet black bean paste. Not red bean though, as you can see it's brown. But yeah, I think it's a sweet black bean paste, which I kind of like actually. And then this is just clear. If you are unfamiliar, in Asia we have these sweet potatoes that are longer instead of the football size ones that we get in Canada. I don't even think they're Canadian, but the ones that we get in like the Western cultures. It's the same thing, and in Asian culture, it's actually very common to just straight boil 
sweet potato and eat it for breakfast. There's nothing to it, it's literally just boiled in water and it becomes very soft. You can eat it with the skin or you can peel the skin off like this and then you just eat it. This is, I hate doing this with chopsticks because you always get like these splinters. Let's try this pickled vegetables. I put these on everything that I eat. So for example, on here, Mm. They're also really good on these buns. So you just take some of the pickled vegetables like this and put it on the bun and then you just eat it. It's good. I won't show you guys the egg. It's literally just a hard boiled egg. I wish they would soft boil it, but here culturally people like to eat things that are completely cooked. It is what it is. I can't get my over easy eggs here. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have this milk. It's very common in China to have this milk. I don't know how they do it because in Western cultures, our milk goes, gets expired really fast, right? Like fresh milk should expire fast. These milks, this one lasts six months in a curtain. So tell me what the secret is because the only ingredient on here is milk. But I don't think that's true. I, either way, it tastes fine. It's just room temperature. And then you put this straw into this hole and uh, it's kind of like a Capri Sun, but a milk. So I'm actually going to save this because I have a few of those instant coffee makers and I'm thinking of, because I can't drink black coffee, when I do make those, I will just put some of this milk in the coffee. So I'm actually not going to drink this right now. So I am going to eat as much of this as I can for breakfast and I will check in with you guys afterwards. Okay, so I just did my temperature check. Basically, they just knock on your door. If you can like kind of listen in the background, they're knocking on the other doors. Essentially, they knock on the door, you open the door, and then they just point the temperature check gun at your forehead, and then they just write down what your temperature was and move on. And that's that's it, and that happens twice a day, every single day. So since today is actually my third full day here, I've kind of made a mess in the first two days because I was like on a weird sleeping schedule and everything was just kind of a mess. So today I am going to clean my room and I'm gonna show you guys what they gave us to clean our rooms because we don't get any room service, no one comes in for 14 days. So we have to do the cleaning by ourselves. First, I'm gonna make my bed, I'm gonna clean up my suitcase area here a little bit more, and then I'm gonna wipe the surfaces and I'll show you guys what they gave us to wipe the surfaces. Okay, so I got some clothes that I'm going to hand wash. I did ask the hotel to give me some soap and some detergent they brought it up to me i'll show you guys what it looks like and i just use that to hand wash some of my underwears and socks and stuff and then bigger clothing pieces i'm not going to hand wash it because it's just too much work i'll just wait until i get home to wash it in chongqing oh and also if you're like me and you don't bite your nails and you need to cut them bring yourself a nail clipper like i did you know, it's 14 days. I, I can't really go that long without cutting my nails. I don't like having long nails, so that's that. Just so I can wipe the floors, I'm gonna close my suitcase so that I have the space. And then I also have a yoga mat here. So I'm gonna try to open up some of this area here between my bed and the couch here so that I can work out in the afternoon. So in terms of garbage from this morning, we just put it back into this bag, tie it up, and then I'm going to put it outside at the door. Alright, let me show you guys what we need to do to clean the floors here. So they did actually give us instructions on this piece of paper. I mean, there's a lot of instructions on here, but it also includes what we're supposed to do so let's see so we're given this bucket here this bucket and it has this microfiber cloth that i'm going to use to wipe my surfaces so i'm going to start with the desk that i have and then the floors in my main bedroom they gave us another face cloth some toothbrushes some combs and then here's the thing this is what you need to clean. So they gave us a little bucket and then this container 
of what looks like pills you actually take these tablets and they dissolve and I think they're like chlorine or some some kind of disinfectant so you put these in 200 milligrams of water so I'm gonna put some water into this bucket here let me show you guys let me set this down I'm gonna open this And it says to just take one tablet. So I, oh, oh, okay, yeah, that smells like chlorine. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but we just put one tablet of that in the water. You can see it like dissolving right there. Interesting, right? I wish I just had like Lysol wipes or something like a normal person. That is not the case. And my only concern is that when I use that thing, I just smelt it. It smells so strong and I don't know if I want my room to just smell like bleach the whole time. So I'm not going to do it every single day. It says you're supposed to, but like I'm not that dirty. So I only do it every single time, but I am going to, we'll see. I'll show you guys. This is the table that I'm going to wipe first. Oh, and I have this book. It's the little red book. Shout out to Mark who got it for me many years ago, but it's like golfer's handbook. The pill has dissolved in the water in here. Guys, if you're watching this, like, I miss my vacuum. Like, my mom's definitely gonna be watching this. Hi, mom. I really miss my vacuum. I if you if you're my friend and you know me, you know how much I love vacuuming the floor so that they're not dirty like this. Cuz I can see all of my hairs and I don't like that. <laughs> okay, so now that I'm looking closely, I'm a little bit grossed out because I can see like a guy's hair on the floor like all over the place. It's definitely not mine. Now I'm kind of questioning if like they cleaned the floors before I got here. Well, I don't know. At least I'm disinfecting everything now. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, let's continue. So, I used to swim, and uh, this room is bringing back some memories now. <laughs> this is a little random trick for you guys. I like to sort out my electronics in these makeup bags. So for example, this is my Victoria's Secret makeup bag, and inside is electronics stuff. So I have like my extra adapters, my camera cover. When I was on the plane, my chargers were also in this bag. So these are, I think, a very good size to keep your electronics. And then I also, Air Canada gave us these like little pouches that had like the eye mask and um, some stuff on it. So this is also a very good size. So I'm gonna actually use this for my computer cord, like my big block for my MacBook charger. And then my, um, my MacBook like extension thing that I always use for my SD cards. So I'm gonna put all of my MacBook stuff in here and then like my phone and camera charging stuff will be in this bag. That's just like a random tip for you guys, a little travel tip if you will. are allowed to get people to bring you stuff or you can order stuff to your room the only thing is it has to be nicely packaged so you can't order like hot food takeout it has to be nicely packaged in a box so my family friend was kind enough to bring me a whole bunch of snacks in this box and first you have to drop it off at the front desk they sanitize everything and they bring everything up once a day so here's what I got in the mail um, we got a whole bunch of Oreo snacks, so that's super exciting because in Asia, Oreo is a little bit more adventurous. So we'll start off with this one. It's like just an Oreo chocolate Oreo. And then we got these two that are like little packets. They're like little Oreo packets and they come in vanilla and strawberry. And then we got this one that's just like a chocolate Oreo wafer with some chocolate coating and vanilla drizzle. 
And then we got this one that's just an Oreo matcha stick. I love that. This is just a vanilla wafer Oreo and this is the wording for Oreo in case you're curious. It's Ali Al. Super cute, right? She got me some walnuts. And then, where's the other packet? This is very similar to a walnut, except it's not as round. Like, if you peel it open, both of them have like the two sides. It looks like two sides of your brain. And actually, we believe that these fats in these nuts are really good for your brain. So, healthy fats for me. This is just a pack of dried, um, very sugary dates. So, they're sweetened dates and they're really good. I love them. This is just green beans. I haven't opened these. I don't know if they're like the wasabi beans or if they're just salted like green beans. Either way, I'm here for it. And finally, we got some almonds, one of my favorite nuts to eat. <laughs> I love almonds, whether it is chocolate covered almonds or just plain almonds, I love them. And then let me show you guys. So this is the coffee that I was talking about at breakfast. It's a Japanese brand. It was gifted to me, so I didn't buy this. I don't know. But if you look at the pictures, it's basically one of those that you like put on the sides of the cup and then you pour hot water through the middle. And it's kind of like an instant drip coffee, if that makes sense. So we're going to make this together. I'm going to show you guys and then I'm going to actually put some of the milk from breakfast in it. That is all for my snacks. I know my mom's going to be watching this. I am not going to eat all of the sweets all at once. I'm maybe going to have one every couple of days. I am not a huge snacker myself. Once in a while, I do have a craving for snacks, for sugar, especially because I'm on my period right now. So I might have a few, but don't worry. I will not eat all of these all at once. I know that's bad for me. <laughs> now I am just going to watch some Netflix. I started watching Too Hot to Handle, the Spanish version. Um, I know that these shows are kind of just like kills your brain cells, but the Spanish version I watch in Spanish with Spanish subtitles. So for me, it's like learning a new language, like I, not learning a new language, but continuing to learn a language. I'm gonna do that for a little bit and then I will see you guys at lunch. It's lunch time. So let's see what we got in this bag. Just like breakfast, it comes in a plastic bag. What's on top here, I think, is the soup. This, I'm not sure what it is, but let's find out. Interesting. So this looks like um, kelp and egg soup, which is a classic here in China. This looks like just a tangerine in a bag. Yeah, it's an orange. And then our Spongebob cutleries. This is my lunch box. We got some shrimp here, some bean sprouts. We've had bean sprouts for a few days now. I wonder if they just bought a lot. This looks like one piece of um, pork belly, but it's just a really fat piece of pork belly. And we got some rice, some broccoli, and I think that's pork also. Let's give it a try. Here we go again. Oh God, look at this. This is why I don't like these chopsticks. They're like, they're terrible. They're just terrible. Well, yeah, this one, <laughs> guys, look at this. This completely is, I'm not using this because I'm gonna get splinters in my mouth. Let's try this one instead. It's better. Let's try the shrimp. And actually for these shrimps, you can eat the shell with it. Like this, and just take the body and you bite off the head. Pretty good. If you don't like the texture of the shell, you can obviously peel the shell off. Try the bean sprouts. Ooh, there was pork under the bean sprouts. I didn't see that. See? So this is something I noticed with a lot of these vegetables is that they're too salty. Like they don't put any spice in it, but I kind of just taste a mouthful of salt. They do pretty good with the proteins. 
I think for vegetables, they're trying to make it like super, make it have flavor, but they salt a little bit too heavy for my personal taste. So, so far the shrimp is probably my favorite. Let's try this vegetable. This one is better. This is just your regular um, Chinese like long lettuce. I actually really like this vegetable. So this is just a giant piece of pork. Let me show you guys. And look at how thick it is. They did not slice this. What? Usually we slice it into thin slices. Mm. Now you can see the cross section here. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not quite the dish that I was thinking it is. It's kind of like an in-between. Now let's just try the classic broccoli. <laughs> yeah, broccoli kind of just tastes like it's been blanched and then like a little bit of salt was added to it. So overall, the meals here, because they do have to adhere to everyone living here, they're usually pretty bland, except sometimes things are a little bit too oversalted for my opinion, but usually there's nothing spicy. There might be some things with a little bit of spice, but nothing that I would personally consider spicy at all. That is something I will be looking forward to when I get out. I mean, I understand why they're doing this. There's not as much protein here as I would normally eat on my own. And sometimes the main protein isn't like something that I would eat so much because for example, here, this pork is mostly fat. I will probably only eat like the half of it and the non-fat part. The shrimps, they're pretty small. They're like little baby Oh, baby shrimps. I think it'll be good for like my health to just eat a little bit lighter, no spice, and less protein. I do have granola bars with me, so I will probably have one of those to add some protein to this. Overall, it's edible, it's food, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna eat this, and then I think I'm gonna do some yoga, so we will see. Okay, friends, I just did a little yoga workout um, and now we got dinner at the door. So let's see what we got. Uh, first, we got some yogurt. This is like the Asian yogurt. It's actually very liquidy. I feel like there's sugar in this. In a lot of cultures, they like to eat yogurt for dinner or actually as like the dessert for dinner. And then we got a soup. Ooh, okay. I like this one. It looks like it's pork soup today or pork ribs soup. Our Spongebob cutlery. Let's see what's in this tray. Ooh, interesting. We got rice as usual, the usual base. This looks like beef slices. We got just some green veggies here. These some celery and pork stir-fried. This looks like konjac or like a gel gelatin. And then we got chicken. Let me show you guys what this, this thing is. Let me pick one up and show you. You can see it's almost clear. And it kind of like melts in your mouth. There's a little bit of a, a bite to it. There's nothing really like it. So I don't know how to explain it to you guys lightly salted green veggies got some celery with some uh, pork mm. I actually really like celery stir fry I think it has that like light airy crunchy texture and it goes really well with the pork these beef slices, <laughs> I really wish they had like chili oil or something. That would make them so good. But as I said earlier, they don't add spice to these to these meals. This is kind of bland. Like if this had chili oil, 
That would be very good. Let's try the chicken. This is the chicken drumstick. So it's lightly marinated with almost like a a light curry. But it, it also tastes kind of like it came straight out of a chicken soup. So it has that like nice chicken broth flavor. And in China, we like to keep the skin on. Because if you make it correctly, the skin is really crunchy. And it gives it that like nice texture. I'm going to eat my dinner. And then I will check in with you guys afterwards. <laughs> Guys, I just took a shower and I am so tired. <laughs> it's just past 6 p.m. and I'm trying to stay awake until 9 or 10 p.m. so that I can sleep on a regular schedule again and get over this jet lag. Um, it's, it's quite hard, especially because the first few days I was like working overnight so I wasn't actually trying to get on the schedule. And now that I am, I am trying so hard to stay awake. I think I'm just gonna get ready for bed, like brush my teeth, do my face care and stuff, and then put a movie on, and hopefully that'll hold me over until an appropriate time to sleep. At which point, I will probably pass out until tomorrow morning. So, good night. <laughs>